Everyone, thank you for joining us here as part of the Smith AI Master Series, where we talk to uh, industry leaders, uh, partners, and those in the small business and legal communities on different tips and trends and techniques as to how you can do a better job of managing and running your small business or your law firm. So today we have one of my favorite guests, uh, Guy Sakalakis, and he was on one of our webinars last year, and I've been with Smith AI for just over a year now, and it was actually the first webinar that I hosted for Smith AI was uh, where Guy was our, our past guest. So I'm really excited to bring him back here today. And this is almost like a part two to the one that we did last year. So we talked about kind of general Google algorithms and SEO last year, and we're going to take it one step further and specifically talk about Google SGE today, and more importantly, how your law firm and how your small business can prepare for these pretty considerable changes that may be taking place this year from Google. So, uh, Guy, I'm sure that some people on the line know who you are already uh, from your work with Attorney Sync and the Launch Hour Marketing Series and ABA Tech Show. But for those not uh, familiar with you, just give a little brief introduction of, of you and your agency and what brings you here today. Sure. So uh, thanks for that. And uh, really grateful to be back. I'm looking forward to this conversation. I um, I'm one of these uh, trial attorneys turned legal marketing agency founder people. Um, we founded Attorney Sync back in 2008. And, you know, the story kind of was, as a young lawyer, I was tasked to go figure out how we should be marketing online and talking to a lot of lawyers at the time. The answer was people aren't going to use the internet to hire lawyers like me. And I was like, this just can't be right. And um, anyway, I partnered with a friend of mine who had some experience, um, some other digital marketing context. And so we founded the agency. And, you know, really the goal is, is just to help lawyers navigate the, all this uh, online stuff uh, to be able to use it to grow their firms. And so I've been doing that for a long time. As you mentioned, I'm a, a grateful host of the Lunch Hour Legal Marketing Podcast. Conrad Sam and I uh, try to have some fun with legal marketing on that show. And um, yeah, that's me in a nutshell. I'm a, I'm a Michigan football person. And so um, I'm super like lifetime excited. I don't even care how, ne well, I do care how next season's going to go, but I'm just, like, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm very grateful for that too. So if you want to talk Michigan, we can talk Michigan. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so what I really hope to get out of this discussion for our, our guests here today is is what Google SGE is, so they understand that concept because they're going to be reading, I think, a lot more about it in the coming months. But um, also what they can do specifically on their on their website and with content and with SEO in order to better prepare for those changes. So. Uh, let's just kind of open it up with with the general question of what is Google SGE and and why is Google beginning to test this out and and roll this out? So if you haven't heard, like AI is like the hottest thing this year, and and really even in, in the towards the end of last year. But um, you know, I was thinking, reflecting back on our last conversation. So it, I think it was I was pulling trying to pull up the old articles, but I think it was around May tenth uh, that they opened the they announced this. SG supercharging search with generative AI. And so it's the search generative experience is what it is. And they opened it up as an experiment in 23, like starting in May of 23. And you had to opt into this lab's experimental, um, I guess, uh, environment. And as we were chatting about, it was only, I think you could only get through there with like a non-work Email. I still can't get into it Neither with my I. work email. Yeah. So we're we've been playing around with it, Guy and I, but it's from our personal accounts because you can't be a beta tester if you're coming from a, a work email. Yeah, and we'll do some. Uh, I think it'd be great to do some live um, examples. I think the other thing too. So you know, just time, just kind of wrapping up timeline to how we got from May to here and what's been going on. So the experience, the experience that you'll see, uh, really changes the results. And between then and now. Google also released Gemini, which is their most advanced AI into the wild, which you probably have seen headlines about that too. Um, there's just a lot of negative ones and market cap loss and uh, the quote unquote woke chatbot, um, mm -hmm. you know, creating images, historical images um, that are more diverse. Um, and, and there's been some announcements from the uh, VP of search about uh, and the short version is, is that we're not, it's not going to be this light switch moment. I think this is important for people to think of. Cause I think people, when we, you know, when I was going through the experiment, I'm like, okay, 2024 light switch, they're going to turn this thing on and we're going to get, everybody's going to be getting this generative experience. It's mm -hmm. not the case. In fact, they ended the experiment. It's not in the wild, but they are releasing features, a generative features, um, incrementally. And so we're starting to see them merge. 
but it's not like this, oh my gosh, search is totally different, which, you know, again, I think people would recognize if they're doing searches, they probably haven't seen much of a difference. I, I think something else that's important to point out too is Google using AI to support and help with their rankings and their algorithm it is not new. Now, Gemini might be new in, in, in the, the large language models, the specific large language models they're using, but they've been using AI since I think Rank Brain in 2015 in order to help give them the, the best type of re results and to help measure the the validity and the recency and the accuracy of different content on various web pages. So Rank Brain was a really big algorithm change back uh, nine years ago at this point, and that was their first introduction in you know in using AI. So it's it's certainly come a long way, but it's it's not new for them to be using AI. This just happens to be a different large language model, hopefully a much more legitimate, a much more you know comprehensive, a much more accurate large language model. But the big difference is them now injecting that and inserting those results directly above the the normal organic listings and possibly paid listings, which we'll get into um, in a few minutes as well. So. This SGE, this search generative experience, um, could be providing those results directly in search and affecting what we might be used to seeing from our, our normal organic listings. So um, you just mentioned that they're, they've been testing it out for what eight, eight, nine months now, and you know, still in beta. And it it really depends on the type of of query and and even the type of industry. So from from the testing that you've been doing, how how often is it actually generating a generative AI result versus a normal traditional result that, that you and I would, would normally have seen prior to May, 2023? Yeah. So um, I'm, you know, I, I work with law firms, so I'm very focused on local search, uh, particularly as it relates to law firms. And, um, you know, when I, you know, I still get the prompt to, uh, you know, generate the uh, AI version of it. And so when I do that, you know, it's, it's much different. And, and there've been, if you go to like Moz and a couple of different of um, search engine publications, uh, people have taught, have had varying results. I, uh, some have said, you know, it, it's mirroring the traditional local pack very closely, you know, the little map pack. Um, that's not been my anecdotal experience. My anecdotal experience is that it's seldomly the same. Um, the other anecdote, and we'll do some examples of this, but the other thing that I've seen that's much different is placements for what I'm going to call the source data, which is, you know, directories and legal directories, they're re-emerging, uh, as you know, in this search, uh, generative experience, uh, top of fold area. And so I think that's going to be something to, to be thinking about making sure your data is good there. Um, but you know, look, it, it's a, it's a totally different way to generate results. Uh, it's going from, you know, what you've taught, you know, what you mentioned, which is good, um, but the, you know, the types of machine learning that was going on, you know, with rank brain and, and kind of how they have ranked 10 blue links, this is like really, really different. Um, now there's overlap, of course, uh, you know, the, the corpus they're, they're using is probably, you know, very similar to what they've used historically, but, you know, I think that's the other thing we can talk about is the, the deal with Reddit, because this is one of the, you know, in the, we're really talking about generative experience and how Google's using it. But you can't really say that without talking about how they're using it and their and the their ability to generate good results depends on the quality of the inputs. And so, you know, that's this is why you get the $60 million a month Reddit API deal, because they are, their instinct is, is that they can train uh, the AI much more effectively with this, this human forum content, which the whole other issue is not entirely human forum content because people have been manipulating Reddit su subreddits to um, include a lot of AI content. So anyway, that was probably a longer version than you wanted, but um, I think it's all connected, you know, and, and and this is happens to be one of the most exciting times in search that I can recall. You know, we've had some incremental changes. We had some major algorithm updates, but this is like foundationally different. And when you see the results, you'll get a sense of it. I think the folks will. For sure. And each time there was a major algorithm update in the past, whether it was Hummingbird or Penguin or Panda, it was always one particular thing that they were addressing like spammy and purchase links or uh irrelevant information or keyword stuffing and and too thin of content or whatever the case may be related to each of those algorithm updates but this is is different in the fact that it it could very much affect all types of websites all type of industries depending how they roll this out it's not 
oh, well, we, we've been very white hat. We've been very good about, you know, uh, link exchanges and, and placing third party links. So, you know, we don't have to worry about this. That, that, that did happen in many, many cases for many of the algorithm updates. But in this case, depending on how they roll it out, it could very much affect almost everyone or maybe everyone that, that exists out there doing SEO and, and having a website. So here's one more thing I want to I want to uh, get into before we, we share screen and actually show the results. And it's it's how it's producing those results. So most of the testing I've done is on my personal um, Gmail account, my, my personal Google account. It's connected to my phone and, and my desktop here on this computer. And most of the time I'm using it just to ask questions because that's what we do when we're not in work mode. It's like who starred in this one movie or what year did the, the original Jumanji come out or whatever the case may be. It's one of my son's favorite movies. So it's normally just a basic Q&A. So I see the generative AI produce that result. It's it's doing it for, in my guess, probably 70% of the, the questions that I'm asking, maybe even more than that. And it's it's spitting out that generative AI result, but it's it's really no different than the the Q and A rich snippet that we've all become familiar with, you know, over the past you know several years. It's it's giving me an accurate answer. It's relatively fast, and it, it satisfied it satisfied my results. So it hasn't really affected me much in the way that I consume content. I would have normally have gotten that answer anyways from just the the the, the rich snippet block right at the top that that gave me the answer. So I I don't think there's going to be a huge difference in in those type of queries. I think what's going to really be affected is the businesses who had normally gotten that type of traffic for uh, more research-based questions or possibly those actually in research mode trying to find a vendor or a company to do business with. And, and that's where we'll get into a little bit um, in a few minutes and, and how the local pack and local search ads might help offset that, or maybe they won't even be affected. We'll, we'll, we'll talk that out. So uh, Guy, let's let's share screen if you can, and let's just do some some testing here, some some live uh, search queries, and we can see how these results actually show, and what it looks like on the the SGE side, and maybe what what some of these uh, listeners might expect for what their customers or their prospects might be searching for. Yeah, let me try to get the format here to let me know if that looks good on your screen. Yes, it does. And and if you can see in the upper right corner, right by where his um, his profile is, that's Search Labs. So that's what he enabled in order to basically like you registered for uh, the SGE experience, right? Yep. Yeah, I just uh, opted into the experiment. And so when you get when you do the first thing, you know, I'll just do a lawyers near me. So, you know, typical whoops, asking for precise location. So I'm located currently located in Birmingham, Michigan. Uh, not surprisingly, you get businesses that are local uh, to me for that lawyers near me. It's got it's a location context, typical local pack search. Then you get this, get an AI powered overview of the search generate. And this is what will populate the search generative experience. So oh, let's pause is. there for a second. So, so what, what I've been reading and what you've probably been reading too, Guy, is that as this rolls out and if it eventually fully rolls out is that button that you that you hit in order to produce the sge result it may not even be there right it could just give you the sge result on its own where you don't need to manually hit that button in other instances it could give you the option to produce this result with that additional prompt of give me the sge result or in some what seems to be smaller cases it could not give you an SG result altogether. Not not automatically, not even the option to produce it manually. Is that right? That's right. I, so I um I think that's this is a good point. So if you're not opted, I haven't seen an example of this. So if someone has, you can correct me. But if you're not opted into the experiment, I don't think you're going to get a prompt to generate an AI result. I think Google's going, as you mentioned, they're just going to weave it into whatever feature they want it to be in there. I haven't mm -hmm. seen anybody that's not been opted in that got the prompt. Um, could they have the prompt? Uh, for sure. But the, I think the real interesting thing as we scroll down here, and I think this is a, this is another probably it's part of this conversation. But I think it's important for uh, if you're a business that relies especially on you know search in general, the impact that this is most likely to have on user behavior is this ask a follow up because it's turning it. It's turning the experience, and you you said this, from 
a single search to a search journey, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. because Google wants to be able to you know provide the best results. And so in one way they do that is to help you refine your search. And so as you get prompted, you know, it's kind of like if you, if you people are familiar with like auto suggest now, you start typing something in and it gives you a bunch of, well, guess what? Those queries that are auto populated and auto suggest, they tend to uh, get clicked on more because they're show when it when it satisfies the intent from the search box, then people click on them. And as we know from the antitrust uh, lawsuit depositions, you know that's what Google considers the magic is being able to uh, use the uh, clickstream data to inform how their search systems operate. Now, it's important distinction for people who want to hold me accountable. I'm not saying that, that it's a direct ranking factor, but I think at this point, Google would be hard pressed to say that they're not using the um, clickstream data and user interaction data they have from search results as part of how they're thinking about structuring their search systems and algorithms. And yeah, that's that's long been something that's been speculated. And I've always believed that it, it must have been part of the, the ranking factor, because if if people are going to sites, spending time on those sites, converting on those sites in all of that history, all of that behavior is compiled and stored. Why would they not use that as a factor to say we satisfied this this person's search in in such a deep way that they not only went to the site and, and stayed there, but they actually converted, they got the information, they were satisfied with that, with that journey. So yeah, all, you know, that, that information can certainly be, be all drawn back to the initial uh, search result, even if they, they stopped giving you that in, inside of Google analytics long, long, long time ago. So let's, let's scroll back up and kind of um, digest this a little bit more in depth. So you have kind of a, a Q and a, a, a an immediate answer right at the top. You have what almost appears like it's replacing or at least a completely secondary version of, of the local pack. And then on the right hand side, you have the map that's in, in tandem with that local pack. But there's more information here than what previously existed in, in the traditional local pack, which is is kind of interesting as well. And these businesses, I, I, that's why I was going to check to see how much well they matched. Shorts, Freiburg, Bird. Schwartz, Freiburg, Barone, Wright's Law First, No Bird. So the, even in this example, you're seeing it's not a one for one of the listings in the local pack in the search generative experience. And I think that's what a lot of the fear mongers around this update and those in the SEO community are, are really trying to hit that point home is what you've come to expect in terms of your your local traffic, you the, the amount of conversions you get from, from the local pack or, or just your, your local SEO and your local paid efforts, it it may be disrupted here. Now, how much will it be disrupted? We that, that time will tell. But you can see the, the proof is is on the screen right now that what you had normally seen without SGE in, inside of that local pack, those local listings, it isn't a one to one uh, representation here in the SGE experience. So if this was automatically shown to a user. And you were that law firm that had enjoyed being in there. You're not going to be shown here, which that's the scary part. That's what people are, are starting to get a little nervous about. hundred percent. And, you know, um, yeah, I, it's, it's Google's world, right? We just live in it. And, um, you know, this is one of those tectonic shifts where, you know, historically we talk about relevance, distance, and prominence. And again, I'm not, I don't think we're throwing those factors out the window here. <laughs> um, but if you, like you said, if you've been, relying on a certain amount of like Google business profile, uh, you got call tracking in place and you know that you're getting a lot of calls and clients from Google business profiles. And all of a sudden Google does something like this and you're this firm that's, what firm was it here? Bird, you know, Bird might've been enjoying a lot of calls and now maybe in this experience they uh, might not. But again, I haven't seen one of these live in the wild. I haven't seen a low, uh, you know, they've made some, uh, and it's a good point too. Uh, maps, the Google Maps team also talked about how they've been using machine language and uh, some other things to, you know, combat spam and mm -hmm. filter out uh, unwanted user contributions. But they've made there have been some significant changes to even the local pack minus like the search generative experience. And this is where it gets tricky. Like, is that a when you start to see like some of the changes in the regular local pack is that an example of them deploying some of this generative experience stuff like we don't know because they're not like telling us as they roll out 
every <laughs> single new feature. Yeah, they're, Google is always cryptic, and this is certainly no exception. Uh, I, I find it fascinating, too, how different the real estate here looks. So right. you have a, a, an image, first and foremost. Like it, it's, it's, it looks just upon glance much different, much more visually appealing, much more in, inviting. You have a category where it says law firms versus criminal justice attorneys. You have obviously the name. You got the the ratings, which was previously there, and then you have this this additional text based area where you can drop down with additional information. So it, they're trying to pack more information, I think, in in these smaller panes or, or or panels, whatever you want to call them, in order to try and provide more relevant information to the users. It, 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 they are trying to do their their goal is always to try and provide a better user experience. Whether they they do that or not is is kind of besides the point. That that is their goal because it leads to more people using the the, the system and you know more ads and, and more revenue. So it is in their best interest to try and you know satisfy the user. But I, I think it, it just being a much more visual kind of approach is is kind of interesting and I, hopefully it warrants more clicks and more 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 stickiness and, and more usage too. Yeah. And again, the thing I tell our clients is, you know, look, um, we're not trying, clicks isn't the end all be all here, right? We want contacts. We want people calling you. Uh, give me some phone calls. Give me some message requests. Sure. Some clicks through the website are great, but I, you know, in my experience in local pack, it's, I'm always astonished by, and this is true. This is forget about search general experience has been, you know, since local pack has been a thing. I'm always surprised how many consumers call without ever clicking through to the firm's website. They call right from the search result. Um, so anyway, so I think that's on the side of like, you know, look, even if you're, even if it diminishes clicks in this context, it doesn't necessarily, if you got visibility here, you know, uh, if you're in one of these, you got good reviews. That's another thing too I wanted to point out. This little snippet that we were talking about, this little blurb here, it's pulling from the reviews um, and, and pulling from review sites. Mm -hmm. And so again, you know, people ask me like, what should I prioritize? And I'm just like, focus on delivering an excellent client experience because these reviews are going to matter more and more. Google's giving them, in my opinion, giving them a, a disproportionate impact even now. They've got a massive fake review problem. So it's super competitive out there and it's a you know total mess. And we'll see if any of the regulatory enforcement mechanisms do anything about this. But, um, you know, look, it, you, it jumps off the page. You've got, you know, law firm that says that some say has the a compassionate and effective attorney, you know, uh, you're seeing this, and this is just one, obviously one example. If you do this a hundred times, you'll see find laws directory. You'll see, uh, Avo direct legal directory. You'll see just legal directory. And so getting your, you know, we've been talking about that forever in the context of like citations and relevance and that kind of stuff, but getting that directory information and getting happy clients to sing your praises on those sites, I think it's going to matter more and more. Can you click on a couple more of those those carrots and see if they're all being populated from review sites? So that's Yelp do, as well. So I I noticed that when there's multiple sources, mm -hmm. it'll populate them up here above the map. So I think these my hunch is these are all going to be Yelp. Let's see. Yelp. Yeah. Yelp. So hey, Yelp's is, back in the game. Which is super interesting <laughs> because you would expect it to be Google reviews that are, are are populating the information on Google. So you you also mentioned something that that's really interesting and, and something that absolutely needs to be called out again, and that's the fact that it, because it's generative AI and and everyone's experienced this if they played around with ChatGPT, the results are always a little bit different every time because it's it's live data. It's pulling from so many different sources. The, the data sources are always changing. So I, I don't think it's good enough to just have 10 reviews all positive and, and think that you're done. Like you're, you're never done in this game because there's, besides competitors, always, you know, adding more content, always adding more reviews, always making sure they're, they're spending more, whatever the case is. I think you, you need to be mindful of the fact that what Google pulls today for that snippet or that listing might not be what they're pulling tomorrow for that same exact search query. Which is kind of yeah. crazy when you think about that. No, totally. And and I and that's been my whole thing. You know, you're you got to think about it like you're investing in your business's online presence versus like a certain number of reviews on Google. And, and I say that, and I'm empathetic because here's if it wasn't implicit in this conversation, volume based firms, larger firms, have a competitive advantage here because they can do volume of reviews across sites. I mean, a, I know a plenty of excellent 
trial lawyers and lawyers in other practice areas too, that they're like, I, I can't compete. I'm not a, this isn't a volume based firm, you know, and they're some of the best lawyers in the country, but Google is giving, you know, if, if you're going to use quantity of reviews as in your secret sauce, firms that can churn out a hundred reviews a month, they're going to have a huge upper hand than you do if you work 10 cases. And, and, you know, I, I, I've sensed a lot of frustration from lawyers about this and I get it, but again, I don't make the rules here. I, <laughs> I, I think proximity is, is certainly a factor, which we, we've known to be a factor. And, and even more so now when you, everybody saw that pop-up come on that, that asked um, if you could use Guy's exact location or just a, a roundabout estimate of where he's located, but proximity, if it's a, location-based search will, will certainly continue to be a factor. Reviews, the, the the sentiment of those reviews, the number of those reviews, and making sure that your your information is accurate across all sorts of local citations, not just your website. So your, your NAP, your name, address, and your phone number, and, and any sort of other uh, delineators and, and factors and, and, and bits of information that help to spell out exactly what type of business you are or law firm you are, what your practice areas are, and any other, you know, bits of information that help paint a clear picture to those users, you know, what you're about and why they should do business with you. Yeah, that's a that's a really good call out there. Um and the the you know the marketing buzzword there uh, for communicating better with the machines is structured data. And so I do I mean I'm still a big advocate, even though uh Google has gone back and forth about showing snippets for certain structured data component like FAQ pages and stuff. Uh, even if they're not showing them, I think managing that structured data and adding that structured data to your website is a really, really valuable activity for folks to be doing. Um, you know, we're not, this isn't a master class on structured data. Right. We could do right. another one of those. You know what I did want to do though, is just show folks what ask a follow-up does. Yeah, so definitely, like, definitely. So, so I did, you know, I typed in lawyers near me. Let's say that I want to do, I switched to like car accident lawyer or something. So that populates, you know, new result here. But it's using okay. it's it's using the historical context. Like like the reason for the follow up is it can piggyback and and leverage the information that's already been supplied as part of almost like a conversation. Yeah, exactly. And 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 interestingly, historically, when oh here it is. This is this is displaying different. Oh, I, I think it's because I must have scrolled. So. This was where I put, so it, it kind of buries it, it down. It condensed like a, it. Yeah, yeah. It condensed yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. So here's the follow up. So I'm getting this new one here. Okay. So now similar thing. Now, obviously it's tailored to uh, car accident lawyers. Um, and again, as you'd expect, you're getting a totally different set because it's a much more, um, you know, practice specific result. And but, are, are all those powered by Yelp, those, those listing or those, those little snippets of information? No, look at that's what's interesting here. So on this one, look at this example. This one's pulling it directly from the firm's website. Mm -hmm. This one's pulling it directly from the firm's website. So is this one. Um, and then when you go down, you can take a look at these. So let's just see where this one's coming from. So look how interesting this is. Google's, this is Scott Goodwin Law. That's a different law firm then the data that's being used to populate this segment. And, and this is where things get a little hairy. This, this is why SGE and just, and just AI and generative AI is, is such a, a uh, it's still wild, wild west in, in a sense, because it's, it's not pulling from one single source to give you the exact information from that source. It's, there's all this cross-pollination that's going on and it's probably going to try and pull the information in, in near real time as it can. I don't know how how quickly it's able to grab that data and store it inside of its LLMs, but this this is probably the most fascinating part of it. And that's why I think it really begs the it, it, it really emphasizes the fact that businesses need to make sure that they're keeping up with not only just their website, not only just their Google My Business profile, but really any any source that Google can pull information about their company from. Yeah. And then think and think about it, you know, putting the, the conversation we had where it's, you know, say Scott Goodwin law, say he's ranked in the local pack for target queries for forever. And now all of a sudden there's the three, comp two competitor firms listed right below him. Now in this particular one, would I, do I think there's anything in those listings that would draw me? Not necessarily, but you know, 
sometimes there might be something compelling in that uh, drop down result that makes you actually click through to that other firm's website. And so, you know, from a from a classic attribution standpoint, like how weird does this get? Because you know you're going to start to see, um, you know, it's like your Google business profile. All of a sudden, you're like, I'm getting impressions. My average position, which we can have a whole conversation about if rank trackers are even going to work in this environment. But you know, so say when my I know from Search Console, my average position is one, and all of a sudden, no one's calling me because they're clicking through to these other competitive firms. It's like this is wild stuff. You know? Can you click on the the name Scott Goodwin Law and see what happens there? Okay, so we get this. The, that's the the Google My Business rollout that we normally would see. Uh, so yep. same type of information there, which is great. And you still have access to the phone number and the hours of operation, the address, product photos, uh, consumer generated photos from from reviews. Okay, so there's still is good information that's that's being populated upon a click, but it still is structured very differently. It's very the different. layout's different. And again, I think you called out that one of the most interesting things about all this is just how you're seeing like, like what, what is Google telling? Like, what is, what, think, forget about SEO for a second. Mm -hmm. You're a, you, you're a search user. What does that imply to you when you see these other listings formatted like this? Like it, to me, it implies that there's some kind of source data like that they're using to support this snippet. And I'm like, you're getting source data from other firm websites. I don't get it. Which which really makes you challenge the the validity and the accuracy of it too, if it's not coming from the, the source that, that that should be the source of truth, which you would hope to be the, that business's website itself. Yeah, and, and that's why I think is a big issue. I mean, there's probably one of the reasons why this is not just a light switch moment because you know, just like we see with the image generator, there's a lot of problems. I mean, I, and I don't know if uh, you're ready to switch over to Gemini, but, um, you know, I pay for the advanced Gemini subscriptions, 20 bucks a month. And I can, hopefully I can show you, but I've, I've done examples where it's like, there's just broken links. And then there's, there was an example I recently posted on LinkedIn where it was, um, it was law firm search. And it was sourcing information about the law firm from like a print, a speedy printing company in a different city, not even in legal. <laughs> and this is the, this is their premium one. Well, and it, the, was the, it was the same. It was the name of the company, the same. And it just got its, it's, it was, its it was a citation. Style. It was, it was the, it was to the, it was to the firm's hours. And there was a citation with a little bubble and you could click on it. It would show you where they got the information from. And it was from this El Paso speedy printing uh shop that is wild let that that's wild uh do me a favor click on the one more uh further prompt here and let's see if we can go down the rabbit hole one more step is it worth getting an attorney for a car accident so not, that's not going to be tied to local information that's going to be a more generic type of question it, that's the type of experience that i've been seeing it's just normal type of questions and it gives me uh the immediate answer and then a few sources of where i i could go to get more information about that but there's still something to be said about these type of queries and this type of SEO too, because th this could weigh into helping your site rank higher for not only that particular query, but it's relatives, right? We, it took us three prompts in order to get here. So in theory, could these sites for this, for, for optimizing around this query relate up the, the ladder, if you will, for, for other type of searchers that, that Google is going to know are somehow related in some way, shape or form. This is the most important point of all of this. And so it was nice that this example just teased this out, but this is showing that it is now, you know, this idea of generative experience and people are familiar with prompts and chatbots. it's changing how we search. That's the, so it's not about keywords anymore. And in just think psychologically here, just in this three-step follow-up search, Firms that showed up across that journey are more likely to get clicks because they're a fam they're becoming a familiar source of information. So when you see you know Michigan Auto Law on all of those results, that that brand is going to be starting to stick in your head. And that is to me that's one of the most interesting things about this is how it's going to impact uh, the search journey 
and how it's and and our traditional notions, as you mentioned, about like ranking for a keyword versus being part of that search journey across a, a multiple of queries. So if if a company is conducting SEO efforts and they've they've normally gone about this by keyword research, these are the the, the 15, 20 most important keywords that I know my my clients or or prospects typically use, and I'm I'm building content and landing pages and, and blog posts around these keywords. If keywords isn't the focal point anymore, how how do you go about building out content and, and improving your website because of these changes? Yeah, the, the buzzword is like topical, switching to topical versus you know keywords to topics. But um, mm -hmm. you know, tactically, and and I you know I got to qualify all this. This is still very new, so I don't think yeah. I, I wouldn't encourage anybody just to like abandon ship on all of their traditional <laughs> SEO stuff. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I'm still a big links person. I still think links are still fundamental to this whole game. And so, you know, getting relevant local links, you know, or quote unquote, people want to call it PR, but you know, if you get mm -hmm. a news, someone talks about you in the news, they link back to your site or even getting a mention, I think that's going to have value. Um, but strategically, you know, what would I be shifting? I'd be shifting to, you know, more topical uh, concepts, but you're still publishing content. You're still earning links. You're still fixing technical issues on your website. Um, you might uh, reprioritize. This is the whole, this whole game is about, uh, you know, resource prioritization because nobody's got unlimited time and unlimited money to do this stuff. So right. you might reprioritize things like directories. Certainly should be, re if, you, if you haven't prioritized, prioritize, um, great experiences, uh, systems for requesting reviews. I think the reviews are really, really important. Um, but yeah, this, the idea that you're going to write a blog post that optimizes for a keyword, like that's kind of going away. And again, there's, there's another just side note on this one. It's a great example, really uh, perfect follow-up here is, you know, look, you're going to see Reddit and Quora and Avo Answers and Justia and Findla, all of these third-party publisher sites that Google's giving a lot of street cred to, especially especially um, Reddit because they're in a data deal with them right now. Um, you know, I'd be I'd be on the I wouldn't go spam subreddits, but being involved in conversations, especially if you're like a local, say you're like a local lawyer, there are subreddits probably about your city, and so being involved in conversations there where it's appropriate to add expertise, I'd be doing that because this is the stuff that's going to pop up and and think about this again from an attribution standpoint. Unless, you, unless you've got something that's doing something during intake or on your form, it's a mandatory field, you're never going to know because they're going to become, they're going to be coming from Reddit. They're not even, you know, it's going to be someone that's going to message you on Reddit or read a thread. Maybe you have profile uh, contact information. You know, how'd you hear about us? Reddit. And you're going to be like, what? <laughs> but actually, actually, it was because they did a search where Reddit popped up. So that's why, again, this... Um, you know, you got to get out of this uh, mindset and, and search marketers did this to everybody. We trained everybody about, oh, everything's trackable and direct response and last click and all this stuff. But don't be myopic about it. Keep, you know, that qualitative intake data is so important because otherwise what happens is you end up optimizing yourself out of doing stuff that's actually working because you don't realize it's working because your attribution system's not telling you like, oh, you know, you came from this thing. So that was very yeah. ranty. But I thought I had to get it off my chest. No, I appreciate you getting it off your chest. Um, I, I would also reiterate that some of the more important things to be focused on, certainly local citations, making sure that that you've claimed your profiles, that they're, they're robust, that it has accurate information, that you're keeping up with any changes to your business across those profiles. I think structured data absolutely will continue to be important. So that's the code that's um, in the back end of your website that tells Google and the search engines how that how it should interpret that data. Um, and there's plugins that can help with that as well. And I think reviews, definitely. And we've already seen that reviews have been important, but I think as these results, especially for local queries, begin to, to present themselves like this, it's not only going to weigh into the ranking, we've always believed that it did, whether or not they they you know, said clearly that it did or not. But I think you know the, the effect of, of seeing those those positive reviews, what that score and that star rating is, and if they're pulling out those little snippets into that featured text area, that's going to make a big difference. And then obviously you said a, a lot about attribution, which was it is probably going to get a lot messier because you're going to see people being able to take action from these queries where it might not be able to tie directly back to Google search inside of your, your Google Analytics and your, your measurement tracking software. But that could very well be where they 
learned of you, got that information, and uh, it could even be fun for a query that wasn't what you expect it to be, as we we just saw, which is is kind of fascinating, but also scary at the same time. Okay, I want to get to a couple more questions, but I do want guests to know that they can put questions that you have for for Guy and myself in either the Q&A or in the, the webinar chat panel. And uh, I'll keep my eye on uh, the screen over here if any questions do come up um, while we kind of round out the, la the last 10, 15 minutes here. So ask any questions and we'll try to get to them as best we can. So two more questions from me that I, I certainly wanna make sure we have time for. Um, the first is, how does this experience compare to chat GPT? Because a lot of people just, anytime there's something AI, they, they're like, how, how does this compare with, with chat GPT, even if they're in like separate camps, but also how it's going to compare with Microsoft's product, which we know is being powered by chat GPT. So whether or not we want to say it's we're, Google SG is, is competing with um, open AI and and chat GPT is besides the point because they certainly are competing with with Microsoft. So let's start there. How, how do we think that um, this kind of compares to Microsoft's product? And will this possibly give Microsoft more market share because of them already rolling out kind of a very similar product in, inside of their search uh, engine? Great questions. This is this is the ultimate you know, multi-trillion dollar AI question. Who's going to put the best product out there? I, you know, to give you my experience so far, uh, chat GPT is crushing, crushing them. The results, um, you know, they don't have as fancy of an interface. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I, when you, when you, if we get to Gemini, when you look at Gemini, you're like, this feels a lot more chat GPT than right. anything else. Um, so it's not an apples to apples on search generative experience, might be a better comparison to Gemini, but I got to tell you, even with Gemini, their most advanced thing, I'm paying the premium thing, premium thing for chat GPT, premium thing for Google and the chat GPT experience and the results in my experience have been a lot better. Um, now, but, now but if, if you're getting better results from chat GPT, then you likely would get better results from the same searches inside of Microsoft. If, I, if that's, that's my, in, that's in my that understanding. Way. So right. I, you know, I'm right. That, and that's why I kind of think I don't, I, you know, I know that there's like different, you know, entity stuff here going on, but let's face it. Like, as you mentioned, Microsoft's powered all their open AI stuff is powering mm -hmm. that. So those are essentially to me, it's just a different Microsoft might put a Microsoft brand on it, but it's, it's chat GPT with like a different interface, maybe. Right. Yeah. I've, I've also had very good luck with, with chat GPT's results. And I, I think so many people just get into the habit of, of using Google by default, myself included, you know, we've been using it for whatever, 15, 20 years, once we got off of ask G's and, and dog pile. And it, it's really difficult to break that that habit, even if I know that Microsoft's answers will provide better, more thorough uh, results, because I already started to see that in inside of chat GPT, I, I, I still go to Google by default and I, and I, and I might get frustrated with the results and it still is going to be a, a hard habit to break. So it will be very interesting to see them compete from a technological standpoint, but what also is going to end up happening, I think, is they're going to end up having to compete on, on a marketing standpoint. So Microsoft can actually promote the fact that their results and, and their engine is is much more sophisticated or producing better results. And that might be that might be fun to watch. We'll, we'll yeah, no, it's, I think, again, I think uh, it's good for search in general. Right. Because there's a true uh, Google is facing its first real true threat, in my opinion. Um, we haven't even talked about <laughs> TikTok yet, but um, the. Th this is this kind of you know disruptive type of technology reshuffles the deck, and so the the question the, you know the jury's out on um, how this will impact user behavior. Will people will Google stop being a verb? Um, and then you start getting like some of the antitrust things with like what's being bundled in phones and all that kind of jazz. So it's an exciting time. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and here's another very important question that I certainly don't want to end before we get to this one, and that is, how do we think that this will affect paid ads? because we know small businesses still rely quite heavily on Google ads and the local service ads. And if this truly is pushing the results down the, the to below the fold, it, is it bearing those ads? And is it going to have an effect on the number of impressions, clicks and conversions that our small business owners have been used to seeing from, from these paid investments? Let me tell you something, follow the money. 
Google is not, this is, I think to me, this is the biggest reason that they're being so cautious about how they roll this out mm -hmm. is because they're, they're a one, you know, sorry if you're from Google and you're listening, you're a one, <laughs> you're a one trick pony, your ads revenue. If you hurt your ads revenue, guess what? Shareholders start to bail. You start having market cap problems. And in fact, you know, look, even they've already, because of some of the bungling with this whole AI thing, um, they've already lost market cap and haven't even done anything to add revenue yet. And so yep. Yep. I, I, my money would be, if I was betting on this, they're going to find ways to work ads into the, uh, whatever SG Gemini experience. Um, because I don't think that they're going to, I don't know. I, I mean, the only other option would be if they're, they're going to try to rely on subscription revenue, 20 bucks a month. I mean, I don't, that's not going to supplant I, the yeah, ads I, revenue. I don't, I don't No, It certainly won't. It, it, Google ads is still their number one revenue driver with all the things that they invest in phones and Chromecast and all of these other things that Google extended into Google ads. They're it's still their, the, the beloved child of, of Google It still produces the most amount of revenue. So you're right. They, they really can't threaten that, that business model or else it, everything comes crumbling down. So where did the ads actually appear for this original query that you, that you put for lawyers? No here? ads. I don't, I don't get ads in uh, experimental. Interesting. So obviously it's because you're in experimental. Cause I would have right. to assume that, that you got local lawyers in your, in your area of bidding. Oh yeah. So <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> um, so this is pre-experimental. I don't know. I maybe, so I didn't actually didn't realize this, you know, as we mentioned, I'm in, this uh you know personal profile but even <laughs> it looks like even prior to clicking generate i'm not because i'm because i'm in oh here's one thing here's sponsor down at the bottom you know again like do i think that them. yeah do i think they're going to put that that's where ads are going to live in this no i do not <laughs> no it, I, I read that they're still toying around inside of beta with where it should go because people have done tests where they've appeared above the entire AI block, below the AI block, and then kind of it depends on where that 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 prompt was for, for additional information. So I, I'd have there to- There we go. There's some go. ads. There some. So I, I'd have, I'd find it very hard to believe. Yeah, see, there you go. Your, your generate now is beneath the ads, which that's, that's how I think most people would assume it's going to end up being when it, when it rolls out. There's no way that they can not reward those who are paying them with higher priority, better visibility, and and better real estate than the the AI generated results. So yeah, that's going to still appear below it. So so and I, I expect I expect there's going to be ads in the generative results. I mean, you know, there because think about this, like the you know all these we still show ads in local packs, and so this is out ranking the local pack. I I won't be surprised there's some kind of sponsored listing in here. And, and that's what might be another wild card that gets presented when it comes to this whole thing is is are the ads at the top now above the full, you know, bidding to top page, are they going to become even more important because you saw that that, that was the only thing that you saw when you, when you arrived, you didn't even see the, the organic listings because everything got just nudged down a little bit before you generated the result. And then certainly after the result, um, organic listings get pushed down much, much further, but you're right. I wonder if, if, those who are paying for ads are going to find their way into these the, the SGE results as well, which gives them another area to to generate revenue. Very interesting. We know they need okay. to generate revenue. We know they need to. Okay, there's been a couple of questions, so I'll put I'll put you on the spot here. Um, as applied to law firms, how does Google SGE connect with other legal referral systems? For example, state bars lawyer referrals if at all it doesn't unless it's been uh crawlable in the past so you know the uh many of the state bars have made their uh, directories public and so if it's crawlable then that can be in their corpus if if the um i suppose if the bar has submitted uh data to the corpus somehow so it could technically so this is very speculative here but arguably if a state bar uploaded data into uh gemini um it could you it could and, and you're there opted in to allow to use that as part of their training data then that would be a way that 
you know, data from state bars would uh, feed training on the results, but that's a long stretch. And my short answer is I'm fairly confident that's not happening right now. But you've seen it in chat GPT where people that feed information into it in the form of, of questions or, you know, uh, reformat this or, or code this, this snippet for me that that then is, is becoming part of other people's prompted yeah. answers, right? Because it, once it gets fed into the system, it, it is available for you. So really interesting concept from you right there of whether or not Jeff and I and these, and the information that's put into the prompts, if it can almost be another way for Google to generate more data inside of its database. And now it can look beyond just websites and and citations i mean that's what is, that's what chat gpt does right right we know that it does that right interesting really interesting okay uh one more question for some reason no matter what we bid for pi leads through google local we do not get any leads through that channel is this update likely to cause a reset that fixes that issue love this question so what the question is uh, talking about is what are called local services ads. It's Google's pay. I believe if I got it wrong, you can follow up with me, but I believe um, that they're talking local services ads, which is Google's pay per lead system. And one of the uh, big challenges that people have is that the levers you have to pull for local services that are very limited geography, budget, uh, cost per lead, but uh, there'll be, there's only show three most of the time, two in some cases. And so a lot of firms are like, I can't get my local ads to appear. And so the question is, will SGE shuffle the deck on local services ads? my answer is, I have no idea. Um, I, I suspect that the local services ad unit is part of Google's future because I think that they're looking for ways to, I think they can, they think that the SMB market is underserved from an ad perspective. And so I expect that local services ads will always be a thing or like that ad unit will always be a thing where that shows up and whether or not SG impacts that, you know, Google historically has said, and for good reason, um, you know, it's church and state between the search team and ads team. Uh, I think if you, uh, if there was, there was some cross conversation that came out of this from the antitrust, um, but I, I don't think it's in Google's interest to uh, create something that, uh, you know, favors, directly favors ads by making a change to the search result. Because again, I think that you start doing that and there starts to be some cross-pollination between like, oh, hey, how we display organic results is influenced by our, you know, revenue targets for ads. And that was, that was already a thing that was brought up in this antitrust thing. And, and Google still holds firm that it's like, no, we don't, those teams don't interact. So it shouldn't impact it. But, you know, again, based on where the layout is, I think it, it's it, it's inevitable it's going to change it. But I don't think it's going to impact, like, within the firms that are showing up. I don't think it's going to have an impact on that algorithm. Great question. I don't, think, I don't think it will either, only because I think that local service ads are, are still a work in progress. They're still rolling that out. It's right. been several years, but they're still rolling that out to more and more industries. And they're still tweaking how those those ads are are, are fired and and when they appear for certain queries because you have less control over them a lot less control over them than, than traditional google ads so um i also don't think it'll it'll affect that much but it, it certainly will be interesting where they appear inside of a, a search engine result page okay uh really great conversation gee really appreciate you taking the time here i i certainly feel a lot more knowledgeable about sge just after this conversation and, and hopefully those um on the line here who may not have done uh, too much research just yet. Hopefully their eyes have been open to um, what SGE is and how it may affect your local website and local queries that are related to your business and your local website. And if you have any questions, you can always feel free to message Guy or myself on LinkedIn. And we have a number of more webinars coming down the pike uh, in the coming months. The next one is uh, two weeks from now. Let me drop that link here in the chat. And that one's going to be on uh, fixing your leaky lead faucet and improving your lead flow. Um, and certainly um, we'll be able to talk about how Smith AI helps with all that. So Guy, give one more shout out to your uh, your company and your, your normal podcast, the one that you host regularly without Smith AI. And uh, then we'll wrap it up here. 
Uh, awesome. Thanks again for having me. Uh, if you want to, if you like hearing me rant about marketing, go check out Lunch Hour Legal Marketing Podcast. And uh, if you got questions about this or how we help law firms do this kind of stuff, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. AttorneySync, AttorneySYNC.com. Thanks so much. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you soon.